Hey, it's Nathan, and today I'm going to do a little bit of recreational math and talk about this formula and some of the interesting properties uh, of the things that it generates. Uh, but before I go ahead and jump into the formula in its general form, I'm going to just review some things about expansions of numbers and talk about the b equals 10 case. So, the n area expansion of a real number between 0 and 1 for some base n greater than or equal to 2 is given by this sum. This summation is just the uncondensed version of a decimal expansion. So, for example, if we go ahead and look at the number 1 7th, which is 0.142857 repeating in base 10, then the corresponding sum is 1 10th plus 4 hundredths and so forth. But if you go ahead and change the number system to binary or base 2, then 1 7th is 0 0.001 repeating, which just turns out to be the sum of the powers of 1 8th. With that in mind, if we go ahead and take this formula and put it into the b equals 10 case, then we can see that this is just a decimal expansion of a number in base 10. The reason for this is that the power of 10 in the denominator is strictly increasing with n, and will always be greater than or equal to n. Also, for b greater than or equal to 2, b to the nth power is going to be greater than n, so 10 to the n will always be greater than n. And then when n exceeds b minus 1, we can also go ahead and split the term into different terms that would fit our version of a decimal expansion, which we'll see here in a second. So if we go ahead and evaluate the sum, we get the following. The 10th and the 11th terms in the sum are the first interesting ones, since log base 10 of 11 and 12 are both greater than 1 but less than 2. So the ceiling function will go ahead and evaluate to 2. So when we go ahead and write out the sum, we can actually go ahead and reduce terms to get this proper form of a decimal expansion. And then converting the sum version of this number to the condensed decimal expansion, we get 0.12345678910.11. Leading with the formula like this is sort of like leading with the punchline to this math thing, in that it calculates a particular constant called and I have no idea how to pronounce this dude's name because I have only read it in text and in papers. So, um, Champernone? Champernone? Uh, or at least it's that guy's constant of base B. And that constant is defined by the concatenation of all natural numbers represented with respect to a particular base B and ordered by the less than relation. This sounds kind of dense, but it's actually super intuitive, and, and that's why we started with the b equals 10 case, because that's the base that we're usually used to working with. Uh, and the constant will just come out to counting, essentially. So c10 is going to be equal to 0 0.1234567891011121215161718191920 20, and so forth. And that's because, well, 1 is less than 2, which is less than 3, which is less than 4, and so forth. Alternatively, in a different number system like quaternary or base 4, the constant would come out to 0.123, 10, 11, 12, 13, 20, 21, 22, 23, 30, 31, 32, 33, 100. Because in base 4, 4 is represented as 10, and 16 is represented as 100. It turns out that the formula from the beginning of this video is exactly the one that's used to generate these constants for a given base b. If that's not super clear, I would r highly recommend that you choose a natural number greater than or equal to 2 and just try to expand out that sum for that natural number and see what it gives you with respect to that natural number's base. And so even though these constants are pretty straightforward to construct, essentially all you do is just put a decimal point down and count with respect to a certain base, it turns out that they are pretty accessible examples of some pretty cool properties that come up in like word analysis and number theory. So the first interesting thing about them is that these constants are normal with respect to their base that they're generated with. This was shown in the early 1990s for all C sub B with respect to their base B, and essentially it just means that the distribution of digits throughout the constant is uniform. So for C10, 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 all occur with equal probability throughout the number. So normalcy of numbers is something that's more on like the probability. So normalcy of numbers is something that falls more on like the probability and statistics side of number theory. So it's not something that I find super interesting per se, but there are some topological connections here that have to do with things like bare category and other stuff like that that I find kind of interesting. In particular, the numbers are examples of disjunctive sequences. That just means that every finite string of digits occurs in the sequence. This happens by the constructive definition of C sub B, since they are explicitly formed by concatenating all possible finite strings of the numbers 0 through B minus 1 for a given base B. So in most of the problems that we encounter in the real world or on exams and tests and things like that, we don't usually encounter disjunctive sequences or disjunctive numbers because Honestly, they can be pretty inaccessible when you're not in the context of these really nice CB constants where we're just concatenating representations of natural numbers together in a very prescribed way. So that being said, your intuition might tell you that there aren't many of these numbers. However, that intuition would be wrong. It turns out that the set of disjunctive sequences is large in terms of its category or co-meager. If you don't know what that means, I briefly introduced meager sets and how they compare to other notions of size that we think about in mathematics in uh, this video, which I'll put up here. It'll also be in the description below. Along with that, if you're interested in some more and more technical, some <laughs> more and more, uh, if you're interested in something that's a little bit more technical, I've also linked to a paper down below that talks about an algorithm that's used to generate an absolutely disjunctive sequence, which is a sequence that is disjunctive with respect to every base. So if you go ahead and take that number and convert it into different bases, that number will still be disjunctive with respect to the new base that you're in. But getting back to the numbers that we're talking about in this video, the CB constants, it has only been shown that the CB constants are normal and disjunctive with respect to their given base B. Whether or not these sequences remain disjunctive when you change the base is an open problem. Just to flesh that out a little bit more, if you were to say, look at the first nine digits of the hexadecimal Champernone constant C16, and convert it to base 10, we would get something around 0 0.07111111111, And so the naive attempt of just taking a number and converting parts of it to see where we get doesn't actually produce an immediate argument for whether or not this number would be disjunctive with respect to a different base. Another thing that makes these numbers pretty accessible examples of disjunctive sequences is that you can actually use an algorithm to locate a particular number represented with the given base of the constant. And you can do it pretty efficiently. So I'm going to go ahead and present an example of doing this for the b equals 10 case, just so that we stay in the most accessible example, but you can analogize this algorithm to other bases and to other numbers and other bases. So the first thing that'll be helpful to look at is the formula for C10, and particularly the log series term of the parent series. In base 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are all going to have log values between 0 and 1. So the ceiling they evaluate to is 1. Similarly, 10 through 99 will evaluate to 2, 100 to 999 evaluate to 3, and so forth. So in order to figure out a place where, say, 53,207 occurs in the string, we just need to figure out the total number of five-digit numbers that come before it. There will be 9,999 numbers before we hit the first five-digit one. Subtracting that from our number of interest gives us 43,208. But we need to remove one since 53,207 is not less than itself. So there are 43,207 numbers that take up five places 
before 53,207 starts. And the construction and end digit number moves us end digits further into the decimal. So we get this sum for the total number of spaces taken up by numbers before 53,207. And then adding one moves us to the starting position of 53,207. Thus, a place where 53,207 occurs in C10, or at least where it starts, is the 254,925th position. So that gives you an example of how one would go about locating a particular number. It's a pretty good exercise to do this for a different base and for a number in that base as well. So if you want to have a better understanding of this, I highly recommend that you attempt that. If you're interested in something that's a little bit more difficult to think about, one of the things that you can ask is, well, this algorithm finds a position, what is the least position? And this is not immediately clear. So for example, just to make that a little bit more clear, the algorithm that I just described and applied to 53,207 does not give us that answer. As numbers like 123 start first in the first position, while the algorithm gives its existence at place 259 as well. And so even though this question might seem like it's on more of the recreational side of math, there are other questions out there that relate to it, that understanding this question for this highly constructive number might give us a better idea of how we might address a similar problem for a more complicated or more famous number. Uh, the example that comes to mind is pi. So if you've seen the strings and loops within pi video that number file put out a while ago, um, they sort of talk about some of the word analysis slash sequence analysis stuff that you can do with pi in order to determine if it's disjunctive or normal or not. And we don't know if pi is disjunctive or normal or not. Uh, the best that's been done is the sequences of 11 digits have been all shown to be in pi. And it takes like the first 2.5 trillion-ish positions to get all of those sequences of digits of length 11 to occur within pi. So there are open questions that you can sort of like get a better understanding of how difficult they may be or a direction, a new direction to go in with them by studying these seemingly recreational constants that just, you know, concatenate representations of the natural numbers together with respect to a given base. I've gone ahead and linked uh, that video as well in the description below. So if you're interested in seeing the Pi stuff, that'll be down below as well. But at this point, that's basically all I have for you today. Uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more math stuff that I do on the channel here. As always, I'm Nathan. This was Chalk, and I will see you next time.